ideas were great. Let's go back to that and not do it cynically and not do it and do it from a fan point of view, do it from a, a love, a, a, an auteur, an amateur point of view. And that's what's changing, and that's why our TV is really good, and that's why our films have been bloody awful. Superhero films in the last 10 years have just been bloody awful, as far as I'm concerned. But then go back and watch The Tick. It solves everything. Yeah. do anything better. It's just a, The trouble is, is, is I don't think our superhero stories should be shorter than the graphic novels that are required to to tell you. We've gone through mass serialization of comic books, which can be arcs that are several episodes, and years of stuff that can that can be done. And we're not limited by that. We're limited by getting it every week or every month, depending on the periodical, right? And we we hung out for the serials, and then when you get to the, that wonderful era of binding them together in a book and the whole graphic novel. Why the hell should a movie be cherry picking two hours of that? Doesn't make any sense to me. You know, that's why I was kind of more interested in in Chris Nolan building a world so that he could pay off his films. So the first one is there's a reason to build the world. And you can see where he's taking those and what he's taking them through. And I like that because then I've still got the first one. I've still the second one is a build on the first one. It feels serialized. But like, you know, you can love the Avengers all you want. It's just like you're, you're numb at this point. There's nothing new under the sun. And we've got building fatigue. You know, that's what I loved about the tick. The tick took a chunk out of every building he ever landed on. <laughs> and that was another foretold every, you know, Avengers movie ever. I liked Guardians of the Galaxy. And I, I tend to like, there's a couple of those directors who I think are just really special and doing like, guns that are really cool stuff. And he's trying, you know. I mean, the fact that we had two Suicide Squad movies in the space of two years <laughs> should tell you, oops, is really quick nowadays. <laughs> you know, the first one is not a good film. It's just not a good film and it's not up to the standards that we want. It's cynical and it's, it's whatever. The second one, this is a good film. If you'd never seen the first one, you'd have been very happy. But do we really need to make another eight Avengers movies? Mm -hmm. I mean, how much Superman can you endure? <laughs> Let's not get started on Spider-Man. Spider-Man's interesting because Oops. that was about three different threads of Spider-Man. It really is three different threads of Spider-Man. And actually, the one that made the most impact is the, is the animated one, which changed the future of Spider-Man, which has always been like that, you know? So, go back to the, the origins. My buddy, Liam Sharp, is... Did he called me up and he goes, I'm doing your favorite comic. I'm like, oh, God, no, I hope not. <laughs> and he was, him and Grant Morrison decided to do Green Lantern. And my whole thing about Green Lantern was like, you do realize if the 38 or whatever, you all got together at one moment, you could end whatever the problem was right then and there, <laughs> and it would be over. But for some reason, you're bickering about something, and that's why we're dealing with Mark Strong with a funny red head. Um, <laughs> That it, it never, Green Lantern just didn't make any sense to me. And so he and Grant Morrison redo Green Lantern. It's really good. It's like, and of course, it's going to end up being the Green Lantern movie, which is going to be probably not as good as the serialization, but it's going to be a hell of a lot better than the Deadpool joke. <laughs> which is one of my favorite Deadpool jokes. Are there any adaptations, on-screen adaptations of comic or written material that you do like? Yeah, War and Peace, done for, you know, podcast. <laughs> no, adaptations, I mean, there are th art is art. There's art in so many things. It, but copying art is copying art. It's not the same thing as experiencing art. And I think it's essential to create something new. Guardians of the Galaxy is different than what was going on around it. The Tick was different than what was going on around it. The Spider-Man animated movie was different than what was going on around it. There's a, the, you know, it's... Cynically trying to make money out of people is not the same thing as, you know, following and pursuing something with passion and trying to make it, you know, as best you can. TV is it's so bad right now. <laughs> and, you know, we're like, oh, we've got all these choices and we've got all these streaming shows and everything else. And they're kind of like, 80% of them are just copies of the other 20%. It's very weird. It's almost like everybody has to have content and everybody has a TV show and nobody's seen any of them. You know what I mean? So you haven't seen 
I'm like, yeah. I'm like, watch Doom Patrol. They're like, oh, I've got about another eight shows I need to watch before I'm watching Doom Patrol. I'm like, why? <laughs> I think Doom Patrol's incredible. I think it's magic. <laughs> I have no idea. I guess, you know, I, 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 Jeremy Carver left at some point during 11. Super, I think he was supposed to finish season 11. It was a bit disingenuous of me. But I think he was busy doing something. And I realized that coincided with my lack of interest in Crowley, is that where it was going in 11 as it was being handed over to somebody else, made, I just wasn't interested anymore. I stopped being a, an interesting character. And he left, and then he started Doom Patrol, and then I go to work at Doom Patrol, and I've got, oh, this is where the fun is. It's, there's a different preservation of the character. So I would constantly ask him, are you killing me off in anything? I was like, am, I, am I dead yet? And he sent me back a response like, I would never kill you off, asterisk. <laughs> <laughs> With no explanation. He was kind of evil. But he's just a wonderful writer. And if you've not seen the show, it is not what you expect. It isn't Supergirl, and it isn't The Boys. You know, it's something else. And I think it's about mental health. I think it's about way deeper things than most other things that are on. And it's just weird and funny and heartbreaking and bizarre. You talk about representing, it's representing every corner of what's under your carpet. You know, it's like, there's some scary stuff in it. We've got puppets, Nazi puppets. The entire town disappears up the arse of a donkey in the second episode. Um, a whole world in a painting? We, yeah, we've well, got a, oh God, Beard Hunter. Such a cool character. <laughs> Was the Beard Hunter is so... <laughs> that's like, ah! Danny the Street. I mean, it's like the stuff that's just so brilliant. So brilliant. And you, you can't binge it. I don't care what you think. If you've binged it, you're an idiot. You have to go back and watch it again because you're going to miss the stuff that stays with you. It's like if you watched it a week apart, each episode a week apart, you'd be like, okay, this is exhausting. There's so much going on. I love it. It's made with love. Yeah, it tends to be the stuff that's made me love. We like, right? Eh?